All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Aaron Martinez, who is in hopefully a, a sunny uh, Virginia Beach in Virginia. It's uh, it, it's sunny, but it's we've gotten this like cold front over the last couple of days. So yeah, I mean you've you've been here in Virginia. It's like yep. one day it could be literally thirty degrees, the next day it's like raining and like eighty. So today is like actually a little bit nicer than it has been. So it, it's uh, getting sunny. <laughs> good, good, yeah, beautiful area, um, great place. And uh, Aaron started his online journey in two thousand thirteen when he began uploading tutorial content uh, about video games to YouTube. Then he found his passion for content creation and still uses today to take on the world of sales. You now owned your first digital marketing agency, grew it to 80,000 a month in little under a year. That's very impressive. Uh, and then uh, you worked with a mentor and now you have the remote closing academy. Um, and so this is, so your whole progress has all been around around sales and understanding like and helping build sales teams as we were talking before we came on air you've you know you and your business partner have built sales team for some very notable people like uh, tony robbins and those uh and what we want to talk about today is you know particularly for maybe entrepreneurs for for people who start their own businesses oftentimes they don't they don't consider themselves sales people they may not have a sales background it may be their first time and they realize that suddenly well they are not just the chief executive officer, but they're the chief revenue officer, they're the head salesperson, they're the SDR, they're yeah. their customer service. So um, let's talk a little bit about how, what is the best way at some of the steps to transitioning yourself? Maybe the first one is a mindset issue, but uh, to transitioning into actually accepting that you are in sales or if you want to be in sales, how you first take the first steps to set yourself up for success. Yeah, yeah. So I think back to what you just said is it's definitely a, a mindset thing that we found. And we we train people all the way from like current business owners that are looking to like get better at sales and also like everyday people that, you know, they, they're working a regular job and they're like, I want to become a salesperson. And I think where that mindset always comes from is like that negative connotation that sales has, right? When, when someone says the word sales, it's usually like, mm -hmm. oh, it's just like really negative thing. And, you know, people always go back to the two examples I always give are things like, uh, you know, the, the used car salesman example, right? Uh, or the other one of like when you're going through the mall and there's a, uh, you know, someone in the middle just trying to give you like lotion, just like throw <laughs> it at you, right? Those, uh, that's where we get that like negative kind of experience with salespeople. So I think that the number one thing that's helped me and it's helped a lot of the people that we, we, we coach is transitioning their mindset from more of like this really pushy, like sales mentality to understanding that more often than not, as long as the thing that you're selling and the business that you're running is ethical and you're doing it for the right reasons, a lot of times the people are coming to you for a solution to their problem, right? So if, mm -hmm. if you're in that mindset of like, I don't want to sell them, you almost have to think of like, well, I'm kind of being selfish because I have the literal thing that's going to help them change their life and change their business. So if you can just make that mindset shift and, and come from more of like, a, I'm giving them what they need standpoint, as opposed to I'm pushing something onto them that they don't need. I think that's the first mindset shift that a lot of people have to make. Yeah, no, I would agree. I would absolutely 100% agree with that. Uh, I think once you get into that service mindset, but also like you just said is, if you are selling something, whether it's your own product or, or somebody else's, it doesn't matter. You need to believe in the product and you need to be enthusiastic and actually, you know, in many ways, love the product and want to help people and want to put it in front of people because you know it will help them. That's mm -hmm. a very different, as you said, a very different approach than just trying to push something on people. So I think... The first, the first point I think you have to ask yourself is why, what am, what am I selling, and why, and why would people care about it, and how can I be of service? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And you know, back to a ton of the different people that we're that we're talking to, and and it's that mindset that people have to get away from. Is more often than not, it's like, yeah, they answer that they once before before someone starts selling something, they ask themselves that question: What is the problem that I'm solving? And it becomes a million times easier, not only for you to to, to, you know, get up every day and want to, you know, to help other people. But on the sales call, I mean, we both know that within sales, it's not so much about what you say, right? You can give the same script to a million different people, mm -hmm. but if someone doesn't have the conviction and the confidence behind their ability to really change someone's life, it, it makes it a lot more difficult to, to actually sell. So, um, yeah, I think having that mindset, uh, shift yeah. is, is huge. 
And I, and I think the other thing that this touches upon too is the whole authenticity piece and uh, and that's what, and the relation because uh, people want authentic people and if you're if you're going online and searching for courses on how to be more authentic I think you got a problem to begin with there <laughs> yeah. but uh, but but definitely I think the other th- part is is really believe in what you're saying and and believe it with your whole heart and you know, if you can't help somebody, tell them too. So, you know, and help them find the right person. But I think it has to start with real, real conviction and belief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, someone's might next question might be like, well, how do I get that real conviction and belief? Right. Cause it's one thing for us to say it, but like, how do you actually like fully embody that thing? And, you know, when, one of the first, you know, back with my, with my digital marketing agency, uh, one of the, the biggest things that I found like first starting out was, you know, I was selling it. We were doing Facebook ads for, for businesses. Right. Mm-hmm. So the first couple of clients that I had, I didn't have that confidence. I didn't have the conviction. So the biggest thing that, that helped me was, you know, I would go with those first handful of clients. Let's say, you know, for example, the first five clients, I was just straight up honest with them. I was like, Hey, like I'm starting out, I'm brand new. I'm not sure if this is going to work out or not, but I do want to do this on like a trial basis or a little bit of a lesser price point so that I can start to build that confidence. And then after like, it was, it was almost like a a switch went off my head that, you know, after the first two or three people that I was able to help them achieve some of the results they were looking for is it was, again, it was just a switch of like, okay, I can actually do this thing. And as a byproduct of helping them generate more leads and then what does leads do, right? It gives them more business. What does more business do? Helps them make more money more money equals them being able to do the things that they're ultimately looking to do with their business. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. And I, I think um, just to underline that is part of it is, you know, when you get started, learn continuously, learn from and review what you're doing, learn from, you know, I would say learn from your mistakes. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes, but just learn from your experience in totality, the the mistakes, the things that went well, all of that. And I, and I think in the, you should be doing this anyway, but it's particularly in the early days, I think constantly reviewing and going back over and fine tuning and tweaking and all of that is is very, very useful because you'll 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 develop a lot faster if if you're your best kind of critique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, You know, in terms of, you know, other things that you think, what do you, what do you think would be most helpful for, for others to, I guess, hear kind of in, in this interview? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things is, as you said, I mean, we talked about mindset, I think the getting over that part of actually saying, okay, I don't mind selling because selling is a good thing. It's providing a service and it's helping people get to get to where they want to. I think the next part is that, I think then people get a little paralyzed today because, you know, prospecting is is hard. Um, lead generation is hard. There's so much noise out there. I think what people, uh, especially when they start in sales, they get paralyzed because suddenly they realize it's a jungle out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it, it all ultimately comes back to to a couple of things. And, and this is what I always you know talk to our, our students about. Is you know they might be kind of in that that mode because we teach like everyday people how to go out mm-hmm. and prospect and and stuff like that. And if you aren't like obviously there's a one percent of people or maybe that's you know a little low, but there's a small percentage of people that are just like natural born salespeople. They wake up every single day and they're hungry. But you know a lot of times it, it ties back to like what that person actually wants and, and making sure you know I forgot uh start with why I forgot I think Simon Sinek I think of the book mm-hmm. someone within the self-development mm-hmm. space is um you know they talk about like start with why or you know figuring out your your why and where it, it does sound kind of cliche to sometimes right everyone says like why are you doing this but i think that's it's super important to to figure out what that is because without that it becomes a lot harder to do a lot of the the lead indicators right the mm-hmm. making a certain amount of outreach you know cold calls or, or reaching out to a certain amount of people on on a specific platform right if you don't have that end result of what you're like looking to get out of it, it yeah all those those first things become a lot harder so uh, you know one of the things that that for me i journal every single day um i always write out you know what what i did today you know or what i'm going to do today uh, what i could have done better at yesterday and then also what's like the one main thing that I want to get done. And then I just reverse engineer, okay, to get that thing done, what do I need to do? And I just make sure that like I make that happen every single day. Um, and then it will ultimately get you to that end goal of, you know, making a certain amount of money, signing a certain amount of clients, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. Yeah. And and I think you touched on something there that I think is really important as well, is that the is the is the patience piece and and also 
being able to understand leading indicators of success? Because in my experience, I mean, everything takes a little longer than you would like it to. Um, therefore, and especially if you're starting off and you're, you're, you know, you're selling for the first time, well, you may not have experienced the level of rejection, of silence, of ghosting that you're going to get as a salesperson. And therefore, you need something to measure that you're, you know, to measure the fact that you're making progress because it can e- very easily feel like, uh, you know, I'm just stuck here. And I think in the early days, that's when a lot of people lose confidence and, and either drop out or, or just become poor salespeople because they have no confidence. Yeah, I I mean, and that's that's the thing with with like the whole whole sales space is it is kind of like it is a dog eat dog world, right? If you're talking about, you know, some of these more uh whether it's software sales or mm-hmm. real estate or insurance or or mortgage or whatever it is is because it's like the, they all have very uh what's what's like the easiest way to put it, like very low success rates, right? It's like it, it kind of lends itself to okay, if only a certain amount of people are doing what they yep. need to do to make that it's like those are the two three percent of people that are also like the higher income earners so i think um you know i i've been you know working on the craft of sales since you know i started my first business in 2015 and like i feel like i'm just now you know in the past like one or two years getting to it so you know I, i'm naturally an impatient person so I, I definitely play to like that whole thing i think most people are especially with you know the, all the instant gratification that we get these days of like oh i need groceries let me instacart or oh i need a you know i need a, a ride to the airport let me just order an uber right but understanding that okay like sales isn't something where it's just like all right let me, let me just like download this into your to your brain and, you know who knows it could be a thing in the next five years with <laughs> ai and stuff like here's like a usb just like there you go you have you have all the sales knowledge you need <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think the other the other thing to be honest aaron i think which is critically important is is don't try and do this on your own i mean it's hard enough as it is uh, but I would really, really recommend that if you're going to get into this, go find somebody like an Aaron, uh, go and get some education, join a community so that you're with people. You know, if you join like people who are learning together or sharing ideas and all of that, then you won't feel so alone. But you'll also maybe you'll avoid some pitfalls by getting best practices. But I think that's the thing that's often pushed to the side because there's so many other things going on that they don't focus on actually learning and building a community of support around them. Oh yeah, I I definitely agree. It's I think the the moment that a lot of things changed for me in you know when I when I was starting one of my first businesses was like I I really struggled for you know a year, uh, probably more than that, a year or two years, just like looking at stuff on YouTube and you know going with all these like free resources because I didn't have a ton to invest at the time. Sure. But I remember that like as soon as I invested into like my first mentor, it was like everything that that person had done, I had like just really condensed into a, to a a small window of like, okay, here's exactly what you need to do. And then along with that came with, you know, a community, a lot, a lot of how these like online communities kind of go. And, you know, I I very specifically remember it, uh, just connecting with three or four other, other guys within the program. And we're just like, Hey, like let's hold each other accountable every single day at like X time. We're going to connect, talk about the day, what went well, what didn't go so well. And not only from just like a a pure information overload standpoint Mm -hmm. of just getting exactly what everyone's doing on a daily basis to, 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 you know, to use those things. Uh, The other part was just the accountability, right? I think that's, that's the other, another really big part, especially in this like world we live in now where it's so remote is a lot of like, I, I, I'm I'm a house, like (laughs) it's not, you know, I don't have a, you know, a supervisor, you know, looking over my shoulder asking like, what are you doing? Um, So it's like that has its pros and cons, right? Yeah, I don't have someone looking over my shoulder, but I also don't, you know, a lot of times don't have that accountability of like, hey, did you do what you need to do every single day? And that was, you know, that that has its own struggles when I when I first started. But for anyone that is in that same situation where they don't feel like they're where they want to yeah. be or getting where they want to be, I think those two things help out a lot, help out a lot, accountability partners, and then also just like someone to guide you through exactly what you need to do. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a critically important piece. It's like, you know, how many people have gym memberships that they never go to the gym because there's nothing holding them accountable. Whereas if you belong mm-hmm. to a club or, or, you know, there's a, there's a group you go with, whatever, then it's a lot, you know, where were you last week? So there's that there's that inbuilt, and I think that's critically important for for salespeople to have a little bit of that accountability uh, built in as well. So I think that piece, the education piece, is really critically important. Are, do you think now, 
as you you know the world is changing as you mentioned like you know we're in this crazy uh, culture of instant gratification and lowering falling attention spans are there anything that you're any any traits or skills or things that you're seeing that are coming more to the fore now that are more needed than ever perhaps in, in terms of in terms of what just like just as a as a sales rep or yeah as a sales rep yeah yeah, yeah. So we we interview a ton of of sales reps. As we talked about earlier, like we're we have two sides of our business. We have like people that we're training to be salespeople, and then we also have our BB division where we're just like teaching other sales teams to do so. So we're doing you know thousands of interviews a month mm -hmm. to to weed out like you know the, the specific people that we can then place into some of these higher level businesses. Um, I'd say the first thing, is, and these are like. I don't think they're necessarily like specific to sales. I think it's definitely more like the person, right? Mm -hmm. Adam, you know, we have a podcast as well and we, you know, interview different sales reps. And when I ask them the question of like, have you had sales experience in the past? I'd say 75% say no. Um, and mm -hmm. I think the reason that is, is because like we talked about earlier, when you have like people coming from these industries that are a little bit more, um, and for more context, we sell more like info type products or courses, stuff like that, um, right. is, the, is the market. So when we see people coming from these other types of markets is we can help them. Right. But it's more of like, you have to, they have to unlearn bad habits and then create like these new ones of like that helping mentality. So I think one, one thing that, that I've noticed through a, just a ton of interviews is honestly just their ability to actively listen. Like that is a, a huge, huge thing. Again, back to, you know, this, this pushy way of sales is your, your, you know, the, the Grant Cardone's in the world or whoever, they're always like, you need to push, you need to ask this, you need to do blah, blah, blah. And just like this really kind of just pushy mentality as opposed to if you can find someone that is really good at listening, like that's just a huge thing that we um, preach, you know, for on one of our interviews and we, you know, we will give them like step by step of like, do this, do this, do this, do this. And if they don't do it exactly as, you know, you know, also following instructions is another mm -hmm. big part, but if they're not actively listening of like, this is what I need to do. And then responding in the way that we know that they did actually listen to us, then we, it, it's kind of cut off from there. It's like, if you can't, if you're not good at listening, like it's, it's not going to be a good situation in like, you know, in the, um, in the sales world. So I think that would be f the, the first thing. And then the other, you know, in terms of this, like this online world is you got to find someone that has this, like, it's more of like a, a like an, not an upbeat personality, but someone that can like work like on the camera, if that makes right. sense. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it's such a big thing. You know, I, there's a saying that like, you know, in order for you to come off at like a hundred percent on camera, you need to be at like 120 because mm -hmm. a lot of the thing, like you don't really in person, you get a lot more uh, body language. Sure. You get a lot more of like those different cues. So whenever we're, you know, when we do these on camera interviews with people is like, we're taking note of little things. Like what does their background look like? Are they speaking with their hands? Do they have like, you know, I guess not eye contact. You know what I mean? Like my camera's mm -hmm. up here. I'm looking down yep. here. Um, yep. So I think those, I mean, would be a couple of main traits that we've we've seen like translating into the new world. Um, yeah, and uh, just the active listening one for a start, a hundred percent. If you can't actively listen, and unfortunately, that's becoming a lost art because how often have you, just in your own personal life, how often have you had a conversation with somebody, and you're talking about something important, and then their phone dings, and they look at the message, and then come back, and you go, "Well, you weren't listening at all." So now yeah. there's actually you can actually there's some giveaways now as opposed to somebody staring at you going, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," like this, and they're not thinking. And the other thing is, if you don't actively listen, especially especially in sales, is the first time they say something that you think is a problem that you can solve, you're going to jump in on it. And it may not. And if you let the conversation go or just ask clarifying questions, it may turn out that that's not an issue they're, they want to solve, that there's a bigger issue that you've completely missed. So I think mm -hmm. the active listening, 150%. And I think it's becoming tougher because of the culture we live in. Yeah. On that same note, uh, it, it, interesting that you said that because I just did a, a YouTube video about that, I think, uh, two days ago is, you know, and and or I guess just a question for you, the audience that's on here, who do you think like is most of like the industry that they're they're selling for? Just so I can kind of relate it back. Uh, mostly technology sales, I would say. Okay. okay. So, I mean, this is I mean, it's pretty broad to like all sales, but. Mm -hmm. You know, when it, when it comes to the, you know, everyone always wants to know, like, what is like the best script or the best, you know, a framework or whatever. And I think like I, I use the word framework because I think it's it's if you yeah. if you have a script, you kind of take away the active listening part. And like I, I listen to, you know, probably 15, 20 calls, uh, you know, every week and do do reviews for people within our community. And that's one of the biggest things like back to the active listening is not being able to 
because they're not listening, they're not like actively adapting the framework that they're using. Because like you said, it's like, it, like my biggest tip is if you can just create a framework, create it, make it really, really simple. And then anytime someone like says something specific in your head, and this takes some time to get, right? You're not going to get this mm -hmm. the first, second, third time because you don't know like what the framework looks like. But if you can do it in a way where, you know, you they, let's say you ask your first question, you know, what's the biggest struggle that you're figuring out, like you're finding in your business right now? And they list off A, B, and C. And B is like question six of your script, right? You got to jump right to that, right? Because you're digging yeah. into pain. Again, that's not something that's that you learn overnight, but it does those two things. Number one, shows that you're actively listening. And then number two, it helps you build up all the things that you need in, in the discovery phase to put at the end of the call to make sure that you're, you know, pushing them in the right direction of, of you know, making the right decision for them. Yeah. And, um, and just finally, I mean, just come back to something that you mentioned earlier, but I think one of the leading indicators of success for a salesperson or somebody coming into sales is coachability. And I think that's that's so key is that you need to be you need to be coachable. You need to put aside your ego, all of that kind of stuff and actually, you know, work with people who will help you help you get better. But you have that's a mindset thing, too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's two parts to it. I think there's there's coachability is like coachability is like the ability to take in the information. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think a. Uh, and there's like a couple more steps to it, but I think the more important part to that, which is number two, is the just the the ability to consistently create your own uh, feedback loop. Because it's one thing for me to do a call review, right, and give them everything that they need and like them taking that information. But it's another thing for me to say, okay, you need to do this better, this better, and for them to go into their next conversation, actively implement those two things, and then record the call again, send it back, and then create that feedback loop. Because if not, it's like you don't really know what you're doing right and doing wrong unless you're actually implementing those things and asking if you implement it correctly. Yeah, no, hundred uh, percent. I, I always encourage people is, is be proactive and invest in yourself. Don't wait around for people to, nobody cares about your career like you do. Nobody mm -hmm. cares about, uh, uh, you know, your success like you do. So don't wait around. And that's what I would say is like, maybe you're at a company today and you say, Oh, what Aaron does sounds fantastic, but but my company, you know, wouldn't pay for something like that. And we'll go, well, maybe you should invest in yourself because I guarantee you're investing in yourself in other things, maybe mm -hmm. in your hobbies or whatever, things that aren't putting bread on your table. So here are things. It's like I, the last example I just gave is years and years ago. Uh, I was I was, you know, looking to move jobs. And I found this resume writer and he was, it was pretty expensive. Right. And I was like, Oh, I don't know. They want to spend that. And anyway, I said, okay, like it, this looks fantastic. Absolutely. Fantastic guy. Fantastic experience. And <clears throat> same resume, um, you know, multiple jobs later. And you're just thinking what looked like a big investment was actually a tiny investment considering mm. what it led to. And I think that's the way sometimes you got to look at things is like invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 all relative, right? It's like when I when I first jumped in my my yeah my my first business, it's like that that course that I opted into was like a thousand bucks, right? At the time, I was working a full time job, yeah. I was making like twenty five hundred bucks a month. Thousand bucks was a lot of money, but you know, recently we invested to like a fifty thousand dollar mastermind, did that all up front, and didn't even like bat an eye. It was like once you you once you do it the first time, you know, like okay, this isn't me throwing money into the wind, it's okay, I'm paying for skills and I'm paying to shorten the gap between where I am now and, and where I'm looking to go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Aaron, this has been fantastic and all of Aaron's information will be obviously below the video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit, little bit more about you and your business. Yeah, yeah. So, so super quick, and we've kind of mentioned it a couple times before. One of the main things that, that I focus on within our business is we we have two different sides. We have you know our, our B two B side where we teach companies like you know Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi, uh, Grant Cardone. We help and place a lot of their sales reps. But we also know that you know in this new world of like this side hustle culture of people wanting to start their own business, mm -hmm. is we found that you know one of the simplest ways instead of having to go, you know, we talked about earlier become the the salesperson, become the person that's prospecting, become the one that's running the ads, the CFO, the CMO, instead of doing all that stuff is you can learn, you know, really high value skill, which I mean, is the main part of this, this yep. entire podcast, learning that one skill, make a commission off of each of the sales. If you're partnering with one of these already existing business owners. And, um, that's, that's basically what we do is we teach people how to, to jump into, to this new industry. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Aaron. Thank you for watching and listening and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.